schon, wie es nun auf die Fahrt ist. Not a Notre Dame moment, I must confess, because the reality shows that 95% of messages circulating around the world are spam. And that is a major problem because it has impact in terms of productivity, it has impact in terms of resources like storage and bandwidth, and also has an impact in terms of security. To understand why we are here today talking about this topic, we need to go back to 1982, which was the year where the EP movie premiered. It was also the year of the best-selling album ever was released. And it was also the year when it was created the current standard for electronic email as we know it today. We are talking about SMTP, which stands for Simple Mail Transport Protocol. Unfortunately, this protocol is insecure because there is no way to guarantee the authenticity of whoever sends message. And this no authenticity allows that we can pretend to be anyone. And when we are doing that, we are doing spoofing. Spoofing uses social engineering. And it's very proper among spammers because they can hide their true identity. And this technical flaw is one of the reasons why around the world there is somatic spam, which is the name we give to an unsolicited message that arrives to our mailboxes every day trying to sell us all kind of products. I'm going to show you now how spam looks like, okay? She's a person, and here is spam. She's attractive at first sight, but something tells us that we may end up having some problems, right? From, from another perspective, we can tell that it's not exactly the type of woman who would like to have as mother of our children. This is spam. And where does the word spam come from? This the word spam comes from this pre-cooked canned meat. Uh, it was marked from a Monty, uh, a Monty Python sketch. We are going to see the sketch now, and I'm pretty sure that after seeing this sketch, you'll understand why we call spam a spam. Like in real life, spam is also noisy, disturbing, annoyingly repetitive, right? And with the current proliferation of mobile devices with access to CD to email, we end up receiving spam twice, right? And this also has an impact in terms of trust, because the email usage, the trust in email usage decreases. Some years ago, when we sent a message, or the message arrived at the destination, or in case it didn't, we would receive an MDR which stands for non-delivery report. Nowadays, what happens is that sometimes, not frequently, when we send a message, the message does not arrive at destination and we don't know where the message goes, right? It's already happened to you. And when this happens, what we usually do 
is you told the sender and tell him, can you please send again the message? He will send again and the message will go again to stay. So we end up telling the user, can you please send the email to our, my Gmail account or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail or whatever mail? And we end up with company information outside of the company, which is not a good idea, right? So why does spam exist? Why do we have so many spam around the world? Well, first, because of the protocol vulnerabilities that we have already saw. Second, because spammers earn a lot of money. And third, because there are buyers. Let's see how a normal user behaves when he receives spam. This is how normally behaves. Now, let's see a different type of user, right? A, a user that has a different type of reaction when he receives a message like this. Or like this. Or like this. And the next one is my preferred one, is one of the most popular. Okay. Well, while we have people like this character behaving like this character, some will continue existing and evolving. Some days ago, some years ago, we had few compromised servers sending millions of emails, but that paradigm, that paradigm has changed. And nowadays, what we have is we have millions of PCs sending just a few amount of emails. And some of those PCs are owned by some of the people here in this room. Well, this happened because of the botnet. Botnets are a group of computers that are remotely controlled by a botnet master. Usually, they, they don't do nice things with the botnet. They do spam frequently with them, but they also use botnet to do other type of things, like, for instance, DDoS attacks. It stands for distributed denial of service. It was the type of attacks we saw with weekly process, weekly cross. Okay. And how do we become a botnet member? We become a botnet member when we install malicious software, and that can happen, for instance, when we access a compromised website or when we open a message in an email. Now that I'm talking about malicious stuff, I'm going to present you Mr. Fishing. This is Mr. Fishing. It's the type of guy that you do not want to have as business partner. Right? If the business generates money, it's not going to your pocket. Okay? So this is the fishing. I'm going to tell you now a small story. Our friend Peter worked in a company, and in a Friday he was working with his computer, he received an email, he went to the site mentioned on that email, then he continued working, he went home, he was busy, and he's a hard worker, so he felt asleep. The next morning, when he wakes up, it's not too early, as you can see, he took breakfast, he had a Saturday very well spent, and then at night he decided he went to a restaurant. Dinner was great, but when the check arrived, payment was declined. Okay. The end of the night was not what he hoped for, nor the other person. Okay. So what went wrong? Peter was fished because he answered a phishing email. Phishing is a criminal activity that uses social engineering to extract and technical refuses to extract confidential information like credit card information or password. But how can we protect ourselves against such attacks? Well, we can do it with technology, we can do it with common sense and awareness. Technology, obviously, I'm talking about anti spam software. And uh, the most frequent question that some people still do nowadays is how can a machine or a software decide if a message is spam or not? I'm going to share with you some of the technologies that uh, are helpful to do that. First, rate limit. You can't go too fast. Like in real life, if you go too fast, you end up having problems. That's one thing. Protocol. Like many things in life, there is a protocol that we need to follow. If we don't follow the protocol, if we don't follow the rules, our reputation will go down. Sender validation. 
This is a technology that helps us to identify when someone is pretending to be someone else. Like this person, right? Or when we can't answer to the message, when it's not possible to contact the sender. Fingerprinting technology. Fingerprinting is very useful to identify people, but it's also useful to identify them. Using mathematical formulas, it's possible to transform any message into a group of letters and numbers. And that's very useful to identify that the same message is being sent from different sources. Remember, botnet? Site blacklist. If someone that you don't know invites you and wants to meet you in this place, would you go? The one thinking about the summer woman does not count because you already know her, right? Well, I, I wouldn't, of course. And this technology will try to prevent that messages that will send you to such a place arrive to your inbox. Social network. This event has a Twitter account, and the Twitter account has a lot of followers. And that's good, because it means that this event has relevant information. Like, uh, like spam, uh, if we receive a lot of good emails, we'll also have a good reputation. Heuristics is another technology. Please try to read this text. Using the incredible power of human mind, it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are. The only important thing is that the first and last letter be in the right place. Incredible, isn't it? Well, when they try to sell us Viagra, for instance, they'll try to use the same technique to fool the software. Heuristic softwares or technologies or algorithms are the ones that will understand what they really want to do, and they will not allow this type of message to get to our inbox. Reputation. If someone knocks to my door, and I see that it's this person, I will probably open the door. If it's this person, then my reaction can be slightly different. I'll open the door, but it's some additional protection measure. This fellow here, to this one, I would not open the door, right? And to this one, to this gentleman, not only I would not open the door, but I'll also run away from the door. So depending on the reputation, we can have different actions. This is, of course, not me. When I didn't want to be in a slide running away from another man because it would not be good for my reputation. Server blacklists. Like in real life, we also have the most wanted poster version where the bad servers, the really bad servers go. And we do not accept messages from those servers. Regarding common sense, I'm going to give you some advice. Do not publish your email in your website because spammers use automatic tools to collect those emails from the internet. They do sim something similar to Google, but they only collect email addresses. Be careful with price and gifts. In the internet, in general, the chip comes out expensive. Be aware about privacy terms. Because when you are accepting them, you are sometimes authorizing spam. And never ask to be removed from any spam email. Because when you are doing the instruction, uh, the, the, the removal, what's going to happen is that you are telling them that you exist and you end up receiving even more spam. Don't click in spam links because, as we already saw, Frequently, they will install malware in your computer. Regarding awareness, what I can tell you is that if our friend Peter was with fear, was with her fear today, probably the hands of the story would have been put. I hope now that you already, since you already know what can happen to you the next time our friend fishing and spam send you a message, at least you know what not to do. Thank you very much.